Henry Morgan was born in what is today known as Rimney, situated on the Rimney River, in southeast Wales, inside the boundaries of the historic Monmouthshire. His exact date of birth is not known, but it is believed he was born in 1635. Henry's father was Robert Morgan, a farmer whose home was in Clan Rimney. Henry also had a sister called Catherine. In 1666, Henry Morgan would marry his uncle's daughter, Mary Morgan, there would be no children. Henry had two uncles from his paternal side, Thomas and Edward, it was Edward's daughter that would become his wife, and it would be to his godsons, the sons of his cousins Anna and Johanna, the daughters of his uncle Edward, on the proviso that they changed their surnames to Morgan, that he would leave his very prosperous Jamaican property, together with the stipend of £60 a year, to be paid from his estate to his sister Catherine. As far as his education was concerned, Henry Morgan is said to have admitted to leaving school before he should have. He claimed he was more familiar with the pike, a very long spear-type weapon, than he was at learning from books. He would get his education by living life, and working to make his way. Little is recorded of Henry Morgan before his arrival in Jamaica in 1658. It is claimed he wished to play his part in Cromwell's conflict with Spain referred to as the Western Design, each attacking the other on the high seas for commercial gain. This was how Henry Morgan would begin to accumulate his fortune and his reputation. Joining a fleet of ships in the command of Commodore Christopher Mings, Morgan was given the captaincy of his first vessel. Plundering the Mexican coast under the orders of Lord Windsor, who would, in time, be replaced by Sir Thomas Modderford, as he refused to cease the pirate attacks on the Spanish vessels. Having been given license, letters of mark, to continue the attacks on the Spanish, Morgan, and the majority of buccaneers may have been recalled, but it is believed some continued simply due to the fact they had not received the orders to stop. At this time, Morgan, together with Modderford's brother, were ordered to take the island of Providence, and destroy all the Spanish forts, turning the whole island into a safe haven for pirates. This would be short-lived nevertheless as these men were essentially soldiers, and not pirates. The island was soon recaptured by the Spanish. Henry Morgan was wont to use cunning to gain what he wanted. Dressing in an appropriate way and using word of mouth, he attracted the buccaneers and most daring of pirates, to him, in doing so he managed to engage 500 of the finest pirates in the vicinity. Many of his exploits were successful, some more than others. Most conducted under the guise of privateering and not piracy, and due to the lack, or unreliability, of messages reaching their destinations, he could plead ignorance of any failed orders. By 1674, Morgan was knighted and returned to Jamaica in the post of lieutenant governor. Falling out of favor with King Charles II in 1681, the post of governor would be given to Morgan's longtime political rival, Thomas Lynch. By 1683 Sir Henry Morgan would become suspended from the Jamaican Council indefinitely, by the plotting of Lynch. Around the same time Alexander X. Gwemeline, a one-time confidant of Morgan's, brought to publish an account of Morgan's alleged activities. Morgan was able to successfully discredit the publication, and also to bring a libel suit against the publishers. The book however, did contrive to create a reputation for Morgan as being a bloodthirsty pirate. From 1681 Sir Henry Morgan's health began to decline. It is believed he may have contracted tuberculosis on a trip to London. He was also diagnosed with dropsy, an abnormal accumulation of fluid beneath the skin. He died on August 25, 1688, and his body laid to rest in the Palisades Cemetery.